Hello, economic students. Today we're going to be looking at business cycles. This is learning target 4B, and the learning target is to be able to use the business cycle to explain how overall levels of output, employment, and prices in the economy fluctuate. So when we look at the business cycle, it looks something like the snake that you see at the top of the screen. Um, the business cycle goes through regular periods of expansion and contraction. And let me explain what these are. So expansion is a period of economic growth. When we're in a period of expansion, real GDP is increasing. The unemployment rate is generally decreasing and the inflation rate is generally increasing. We're gonna hit a peak eventually, and economists won't know exactly when our, we're at our peak until we start contracting. So the peak is our highest level of economic activity. The real GDP stops increasing, unemployment rate stops decreasing, and inflation stops increasing and may start decreasing. After we've hit our peak, we, we enter into a period of contraction, or what we call economic decline. At this time, the real GDP is actually decreasing, the unemployment rate is generally increasing, and the inflation rate is generally decreasing. The trough is when we hit our very lowest level of economic activity, and once again, economists do not know when a trough has occurred until after the economy starts expanding again. So we'll see the real GDP stop decreasing, the unemployment rate stops increasing and the inflation rate stops decreasing and may start increasing. So this cycle will continue to repeat itself um, over years or months, but it is inevitable. So is it a recession, a depression, or just slow when we're in a period of contraction? So a recession means that the real GDP has fallen for at least six months in a row. Um, if it goes longer than that, a prolonged recession, six to 18 months long, then we have entered into what's called a depression. Now, people who are quite old in their 80s or 90s um, can remember the Great Depression. They were children during the Great Depression. Uh, which lasted from about 1929 to 1942. My dad was a child of the Great Depression and his family was extremely cold. He even remembers his hair freezing at night as a, a boy in Minneapolis if he'd had a bath because they didn't have a good furnace. My mom was also a child of the Depression, the Great Depression, but her family did not suffer from the effects of the Depression because my grandfather was an electrical engineer for CBS and WCCO. My, my dad's father, on the other hand, had a hard time finding a job. He was an immigrant and he had a very difficult time um, providing for a family of eight. However, the generosity of his family was quite um, quite astonishing considering how poor they were during that time. So we really want to avoid a depression and, and the government will step in if they feel like um, we are heading towards a depression. We attempt to keep the business cycles fairly stable. We don't want periods of extreme growth or decline. These are not desirable. So why do economies contract? Well, first of all, um, there is something called an economic shock. So we have a great example right here in 2020. The COVID-19 pandemic was definitely a negative shock, not only in the United States, but around the world. A terrorist attack can be a negative shock and the stock market crash can be the result of some economic shocks like the COVID-19 pandemic. And then as we've seen a vaccine um, starting to be on the horizon, the stock market starts to grow again and we enter a period of expansion. Um, a rise in interest rates is something else that makes it more difficult for firms or individuals to borrow money. 
this might lead to a period of economic contraction um, because firms do need to borrow money to uh, invest in capital goods. Individuals need to borrow money if they're going to buy a home. And then shortage of raw materials, for example, oil in the past has caused overall price increases and this can lead to an economic contraction. How do we know if a contraction or an expansion is occurring? Um, we use something called economic indicators. Uh, leading indicators, something like housing starts, this, if you see an increase in housing starts, and this is reported on the news monthly, uh, they will tell you housing starts are up by X percent. This indicates confidence in the economy and most likely uh, an expansionary phase of the business cycle. Coincident indicators include something like the real GDP. If it's shrinking, the economy is contracting. If it's increasing, the economy is expanding. Inflation is also another economic indicator of uh, the business cycle. Lagging indicators, this means we don't see them until after um, contraction or expansion occurs. So unemployment rates are definitely a lagging indicator. Um, so businesses may start investing and they may start expanding, but they might not start actually hiring people, thus reducing the unemployment rate until they're very confident that they're in an expansion phase of the business cycle. So that's why that is a lagging indicator. It's one that comes a little bit later after expansion begins and, and leads up from the trough. So macroeconomic goals are to have a high GDP, uh, a goal of three to 5% annual growth, low unemployment, um, the natural rate is four to 6%. When I graduated from college, um, I think I mentioned uh, the rate was something like 14%. Double digit unemployment is not a good thing, but we would expect some unemployment. And then low inflation, of course, we're gonna have a creeping rate of about two to 4%. So these three things, GDP, unemployment, inflation, have been the focus of this unit and um, they are reflected in the business cycles. I'd like you to keep in mind the following. Business cycles are to be expect expected. Expansion and contraction will occur throughout your life. I have, at the age that I'm at now, experienced a couple of times of contraction in the economy. And at these times, job losses might occur, it can be an anxious time. But I have become more and more confident that our economy will will always come back. Um, I think I mentioned I took a class at St. Thomas last summer and the macroeconomics teacher said, don't worry, in the United States, we are optimistic people, we're confident people, our economy will come back. And so I just encourage you to think about that, to try not to be anxious or worried during a time of economic contraction, and to have that confidence that the professor expressed so well that the economy will recover. In the next unit, we'll look at what role government plays in the business cycle. And um, thank you for your time. Have a great day.